Well, hello everyone. Um, welcome to one of the first Club Coco Bell podcasts, which I'm really excited to be doing actually. It's been an ambition of mine for a long time. And my boyfriend actually said to me today, he's like, I've known you three years. You've been preparing for three years. You need to now just do it. So here we are. I did have a nice list of um, questions to ask the wonderful ladies that are joining me today. Um, but we've just been having a really nice <laughs> chat. So actually, it's going to just turn into like a G&T tea party. Today, we have some lemon gin. Which, yes. So we have some lemon gin in our very nice teapot. Ali, do you want some more? Yes, that'd be lovely. Yes. Perfect. Claire? Always. So, lemon drizzle gin for the win, people. I'm going to have a little bit too, because I have quite a lot in that glass already. Anyway, I suppose I best intro introduce you lovely ladies. So I have, I am joined today by the awesome Ali Hollands and Claire Noyel. Hello. Who are wonderful. Hi. Yes, thank you so much for coming. I do really appreciate it. Happy to be here. There's gin. <laughs> <laughs> gin is Not always... there's a podcast or anything, just gin. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You had me at gin. Oh, exactly. Yeah. I, I think I did actually text you and be like, we've got gin and we're just going to have a chat. So, yeah. We're in. We're it's here. all good. It's just like a normal conversation for us, really, isn't exactly it? Exactly the same. So, yeah. Anyway, Ali, you, as I said, well, you're both hypnotherapists. Indeed. Qualified hypnotherapists, which is very exciting because you do wonderful things with people's, um, for mental, people's mental health. Um, and... Um, you came from completely different career backgrounds, really, I think. Mm. Ali, you were a writer, copywriter. Yeah. I've known you as doing comparing as well. Basically, people, she is awesome with words. So she's really good. Um, and then you've obviously trained to be a hypnotherapist and now a lecturer in hypnotherapy as yeah. well, which is fantastic. Yeah. And Claire, is been a, you've been a pharmacist for... In my previous existence, yes. How long? Twin four years okay and you've been you're also to have on call every time i have a problem exactly. <laughs> my 24 hour Happy medical service yes, it's like 911 oh but yes no it's really good thank you very much for coming thank today. you for having us we were just talking actually about how um we find certain women in us <laughs> This is prompted by Ali, basically. <laughs> We're saying how certain women we find quite intimidating and how they basically look like they have all their SHIT together all of the time. Because when we first met Ali, we were rather intimidated yeah, by her. She has we? everything. She's organised, cool, successful. We're like, ooh, feel yeah, like junior school. We can't play with you because we're not cool enough. You're one of the cool kids. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then you got to know me. <laughs> And then yeah. we realised you were even more awesome than we first thought. <laughs> yes, because you had that impression and normal. <laughs> Which is nice. But yeah, why do you think, it, like, I don't, I don't know what it is. There's, like, certain women that you think, wow, like, you're so, like, intimidating and you're just, you've just got all your stuff together. And, like, it's just, uh, no one does, no, do they? No, no one does. We're all winging What's it. What's that, like, the meme that you've sent it to me? The yes. one, I don't have all my ducks in a row, I have squirrels and they're at a rave. Yes. yes. That's, That's my favourite. Favorite. Absolute favourite. That's mine. Uh, yeah. Squirrels. A rave. Squirrels at a rave, but it is. It's and I think it's it's particularly it's a very um, female trait as well. Yeah, I think so. Don't you think you have to have this perception of being uh, good and then some? You know, oh, you yeah. can't just be okay. You've and got not to, just in you've one got arena. To be, exa yeah, in all arenas, you've got to be a brilliant mum if you choose to go that. You know, fabulous wife, hostess. <sighs> Um, yeah. <laughs> you know. look, look lovely me, the Stepford yeah. wife exactly yeah, yeah the whole yeah. Stepford wife thing and then be really good at your career as well so you have to be good at 17 things you've forgotten um, the fact that you're supposed to be able to go in the gym and squat 70 kilograms and do CrossFit wads all day long and not sweat and not sweat what's a CrossFit wad? workout of the day CrossFit oh. people don't kill me I'm not a CrossFit expert but I think you do workout of the day and you have to basically do like insane levels of reps at like really high weights why is that a wad though because that's w-o-t-d maybe it's not wow. crossfit people get involved i yeah. clearly need my crossfit knowledge put in you just got or not. a million comments or right not. there yeah. or not at all. <laughs> but so the yeah, point yeah. is yeah you've got to be a mother you've got to boss your career you've got to have a business you've got to be an entrepreneur and Side boss hustle. lady uh, yeah. words we hate yeah. <laughs> that's what i wanted this podcast to be about what should we do about death to words like fempreneur mumpreneur I mean, I know it's lovely, you know, you hear yeah. all of that, but it's just like, oh, God, it's, it's, it's an impossible label, standard, isn't yeah. it, that you feel like you've got to yeah. live up to? Because whether, like, 
and this is probably feeding quite nicely to the hypnotherapy side of things, whether you're aware of things in your consciousness or your subconsciousness, every message that you take on board throughout the day does have an impact on you. Totally. Changes how you think about yourself and how you reflect to others, how you interact with others, how we feel about everything around us. Mm. So, yeah, huge, huge Mm. amounts of pressure to be everything to all people. Exactly. That's the thing, isn't it? I'm exhausted just talking about it now. But yeah, you do feel the pressure to do everything all of the time. And they're talking about, what was it, I I shared it, an article about um, why millennials struggle and why we have adulting. Because of all the like the extra pressures mm-hmm. to do everything with these kind of like, you know, you've got to have your side hustles, you don't get paid enough, all mm-hmm. of this stuff. Millennials, you know, also millennials who are kind of 35, not children anymore, <laughs> poor loves. Yes. You know, it's like, <laughs> it's like, stop bashing the millennials, that would be another thing. Yeah. You know, millennials are actual grown-ups now. Yeah. You know, Gen Z is what you're talking about, people. Um, you know, <laughs> sorry, Generation Zombie. Um, so. that, it's not that, is it? What is it actually? No, it's Gen Z. I it was me who, you know, smart ass came up with oh, <laughs> zombie. Generation Zombie. That kind of um, works. Yeah, I think so. Love but it, it is, it's that we've already got too much stuff to deal with. Mm. So it's like that, all that extra stuff, even like the basic, you know, going out to the shops, you know, going and, I don't know, filling in a form. And they were talking about, you know, why voting numbers were so low. And it's mm-hmm. because like there's always already too much stuff to do for people. And I th- And again, it hooks back into that kind of, and women, it's worse. You know, mm-hmm. if you talk to... Did either of you go to an all-girls school? Yeah, yeah. Both, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I did. So I went to kind of mixed schools all through my life. Yeah. But when I talk to kind of my daughter and her school, I mean, I was in there for two hours for a meeting or something, and I went, jeez, oh, mate, how do you cope with it all day, every day? The mm. level of pressure mm. in an all-female environment, yes. yeah. because you... Because although they're trying to do their best for you, because they know you're going to have to work 17 times as hard to get exactly the same place, Mm -hmm. it's just the, you know, and it's that pressure that we put on ourselves more than anyone else. I mean, I'm not saying anything new here, but I think it's, you know, it's an important reminder. It is, because I feel like you do, everyone, I think you can't blame completely the rise of social media, but I do feel that there is this pressure that everyone now has to be a somebody that it's not good enough to just do your little bits and pieces and just sort of like have a like whatever you define as a normal wife you have to be a somebody you have to be out there like at the pinnacle do you see do you yeah. agree or and you have to have a journey yeah. of rich a mission a purpose you it's most of us are just stumbling through things living each day as it comes with a vague what's your plan. quote that you sent to me it was amazing we're all just like winging it eyebrows life career we're all just winging it (laughs) that's it (laughs) we are that's totally it i don't have a plan for what i'm doing next year the year after what i know i don't even have a vision board oh my god what do you mean you don't have a vision board we have to do some vision boarding right now i think so no What is it Joe Joe says to me about a vision board? He's like, yay, let's do another vision board and never get on with our lives. Totally, that's what I do. I can make it look pretty and put some glitter and procrastinate a little bit more. Yeah. So no, it's free form. Free form. Let's see where this goes. A bit like this podcast, really. (laughs) I like it. But but, but I think a lot of things, you can't get away from the fact that a lot of the great things that people do are organic or they just sort of happen. You can't. By accident. Totally. You can't examples of that really I didn't intend to be a hypnotherapist that wasn't part of my plan how did that happen how does that come about Ali's fault <laughs> Ali was doing it training course I was a guinea pig yes. you were a guinea pig I think were I you not was... you came along just the once yeah. yes we did I some was. relaxation when you were just practicing it yeah. was nice it was fun and then didn't see you again for a while and then I did bump into you and I'm like oh yeah hypnotherapy really interesting that would be really good to go along with my day job and how does that fit how does it fit in with your day how did it fit well, with the pharmacy it, it did not it didn't. It ended up making me feel there was more I could do with pharmacy. Mm-hmm. You have a, a finite amount of time you can do. You know, I see people, and the majority are women, because mm-hmm. they're the ones who have slightly more time and are more open with what they want and with what the help they need. So you have a few minutes to try and talk to them. They're the ones that will ask more questions about what they're taking, mm-hmm. about what they're doing. So they were the ones that I needed to help, but mm-hmm. they're the ones who you didn't have time for in that, in that day. So being okay. able to do my hypnotherapy means I can have as much time as I need. Cool. And as a pharmacist, that's important, isn't it? Because I feel like 
in my previous career, I felt like I was see, I was interacting with a lot of people. I wasn't necessarily giving them my like best. No, because you you've got a very finite time and you're driven by and a it's big huge amount of information yeah. that you can pass on. It's picking which three bits of information you can pass on at that one time. Mm. Three bits of information is not enough. There's way more you can tell people to help them manage their mental health day to day. Do you find that um, as like when you um, I know you occasionally do some work as a pharmacist. Do you find yeah. that um, people there's still like a um, a lean towards people having like what I call synthetic solutions and like on the antidepressant side. Yeah, I think yeah. so. I think it's almost out of desperation again. Time constraints from doctors' point of view. They've got ten minutes mm -hmm. to see people. Yeah. It's not time. They don't even have time to ascertain what the problem is. People come and they don't tell you what the problem is. I'm not sleeping very well. I'm mm. a bit don't have much energy. They're not going to come and say to you, I think I'm clinically depressed because they don't know that's what no. they've got. Mm. So yeah, there's a lot of medicinal help that's given. Mm. And that's not always a bad thing, but it's no. not the only answer. No. But I think, mate, do you think it's like symptomatic of society that we, but we, you look now yeah, I guess for so. a short term quick fix the quickest, solution? The quickest thing. What's going to work quickly? Not that it does work that quickly. Because again, again, feeding back into like women and, well, just women in general, you are, you have so much pressure on you and so many different hats to wear that you will look for, I'm not necessarily saying with mental health and antidepressants, but everything you have to look for the quickest the way most to time efficient. And, yeah. sort of and there's one argument that says antidepressants are a quick fix. Mm. I would argue they're not a quick fix. And no. three weeks takes them to kick in, you can be doing much more, mm. much more than that. Mm. Ali, you obviously had a... I know, obviously, the hypnotherapy and the pharmacy goes like that. They work together quite nicely. But you were you were in writing before. How did that come about? The switch to hypnotherapy. Oh, I was never supposed to be a hypnotherapist. <laughs> that was not my plan. It's a thing. Again, see, <laughs> the, the really best. not my plan at all. <laughs> so uh, I actually I saw someone. They were talking about hypnotic language, and um, I thought, oh, that would be really cool because they were talking about it in kind of terms of sales presentation so kind of vocally and I'm like oh I wonder if you can do that written down and rather than buying the really really famous book about it yeah um thought I'd go and do a hypnotherapy course love it all the way through going never gonna do this never 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 da 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 none of that and then because we had to kind of see people to qualify exactly. it was watching those changes happen in front of me mm. which was you know, rather than writing was fun and mm -hmm. I enjoyed it, but actually it was very solitary. There's not much feedback. You know, you only the only kind of buzz was getting paid. You know, other than yeah. that, it wasn't that exciting. Mm. Um, but actually, when you've got someone in front of you telling you how much you've helped them, how much their life's changed, mm -hmm. you know, that something was just blew their mind because it was they couldn't believe that they could make these changes so quickly. Mm -hmm. That's kind of. Um, a bit intoxicating yeah you know it is isn't it yeah. and you kind of you want more of that so I had already found a place to practice before I'd qualified that's so cool so um and then went on to because the school I was at was it was I was only on the uh it was like a pilot course so I went on to help mm -hmm. launch the school and then went into practice full-time um and you know, have loved it, helped kind of launch the kind of the, the business that we're part of. Yeah, um, so good. And then got into teaching again. Mm -hmm. So now lecturing it, so teaching more because, um, you know, all these other people who want to be something, I was like, oh, what's the least I can do with the most kickback? I was like, actually, <laughs> it's teach other people to do it. <laughs> You go and see all the people. <laughs> I'll do this amount of work. And then you can, because I worked out if so many people went into the hypnotherapy industry mm -hmm. and saw this many people over this many years. I kind of like, it's I great. can't remember the numbers, but, huge. you know, the compound effect was just amazing. And I was like, that's what I want to do. Um, and funnily enough, I'm quite good at it. Well, who does <laughs> I know, those <laughs> What, but it's really I think it, and I think it's because I'm so excited about it mm -hmm. you know for me it's not I'm not teaching I'm not teaching just hypnotherapy for the um, in the uh, the technical or the academic side okay. of it. I'm teaching it because I want to teach people to go into practice and help people okay. so that's always the kind of direction that I come from 
Um, and they know that, mm-hmm. you know, with me. When they ask me, like, super technical questions, I'm like, why are you asking me that? How is that useful? When will that ever come into your clinic? Yeah. So if they can answer me that, yeah. you know, I may bother to go and find out. <laughs> <laughs> and the course is massively practical because that's what got me into it. Like you said, you see people as a, as a part of it. Mm-hmm. You just have to work with patients, bless them, from the first, we- the first weekend you do. So you're yeah. doing that. And seeing them, you don't... I didn't necessarily believe it was going to work the first time you did it, but you're like, I'm stumbling through it as a student and I'm still seeing people get better and improve it. And that's really exciting. Mm. You can go and do that. And it's super practical. That's really so good. you start from the beginning, seeing people. That's really good. And uh, So, Ali, um, are you finding that people are like, you're getting a lot of people coming to you now to study hypnotherapy. What are just like, well, do you have a lot of people and what are their motivations? Yeah, yeah we do. I would have said a few years ago, it was, you know, like with the... You know, there were a lot of redundancies, you know, mm-hmm. like the bigger companies, they were making people redundant a lot. So you had people kind of with these kind of chunks of cash. Okay. So they would just dump it into a course. So you would have a lot of people who were hard career changers. Mm-hmm. Whereas now, I would say it's people jumping ship. Okay. So like, this is a job that I used to love. So yeah. a lot of teachers, mm-hmm. NHS, mm. you know, all of those yeah. sorts, you know. Professions where people want to help, you okay. know, and they've gone in there because they want to kind of do something aspirational or important or uh-huh. that kind of you know like vocational mm-hmm. and what they're finding is they're hamstrung yeah simply because of the kind of the mm-hmm. you know the bureaucracy yeah. that goes around it and things mm-hmm. like that I mean, you'd time be a classic yeah you know, exactly you'd be a same. classic case time pressures i you know i train to do something really useful and yeah. yet i don't I'm filling I'm not, in forms and i'm not seeing people and i've got not, budgets and targets yeah. Yeah. the organization exactly. is like yeah. putting the pressure on you to yeah. do like to to i suppose to create more of a business as opposed to what you originally totally. wanted to yeah. do so yeah it stops being people centered yeah so that's a kind of a chunk of it and then funny enough people adding on mm-hmm. hypnotherapy so um there was someone who inquired and she was a PT, okay. but she worked with menopausal women. And mm-hmm. so we talked about kind of how she couldn't do like, so that it's almost like people are coming in to train to go into a niche straight away. Whereas kind of when I trained, it was like, I have no clue. I'll just mm. see anyone for anything. You know, I, I had no idea. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, whereas they're kind of, they've already got quite a clear idea of what they're going to okay. do. With it. That's kind of quite new mm-hmm. that I've not seen before, but that's really exciting. Or, you know, people who've worked with children and they wanted to kind of use this. So, and it's lovely, you know, so people have actually, sometimes people come in with quite a clear idea of what the outcome is that's awesome. as well. And like, you know, sometimes it is just old clients. Mm-hmm. This was lovely, changed my life. That's what I'm going to do. Brilliant mums and dads of clients like when really? they send in their kids we all you know we've usually got a parent on one on at least one parent on a course yeah. where they've just gone nobody else could help yeah because we're always the last child saloon uh-huh. always we're mm-hmm. the end of the line mm-hmm. oh well you could try hypnotherapy i suppose mm-hmm. um, you know and everyone's got shuffles through the door going it probably won't work and then you but. blow them away talking about how the brain works and they go yeah. oh my goodness why doesn't anyone ever tell me this mm-hmm. um and so the, when they watch their children you know their beautiful babies who mm. you know i'm talking like 17 year old babies as well yeah. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah i'm old now um you know but when you see them changing and kind of coming back mm-hmm. to themselves again yeah. and it kind mm. of it just it lights a fire so it's amazing yeah so and you, it's the same as you have a desire to spread that to more people the fact that you've mm. seen the benefit firsthand what it can do yeah. And you want to be part of it, rolling that out to a wider audience. I think you both get a bit evangelical about changing yeah, how hypnotherapy is seen. <laughs> you do, though. You do, because it's such a powerful thing, but also such a positive thing. Mm-hmm. And it's not scary or difficult or intimidating, is that word again, mm-hmm. to do it. I think like hypnotherapy is becoming more mainstream and I, I have to say like I hear about it even now as you said about your PT lady which is interesting yeah. it's becoming more in the sports arena and certainly like even like people you wouldn't uh, without being stereotypical you wouldn't necessarily think that MMA fighters and the fight game people would be like necessarily drawn to that but they are stuck a lot of sports people and athletes are now realizing mm-hmm. what a huge impact the visualization side Mind of therapy is like is having an impact and how much it's enhancing their performance to the next level so hypnotherapy is coming more mainstream and out of the shadows because I think there was this perception do not give me the death stare that it's a bit woo woo <laughs> 
and everyone's going to run around like a chicken and yeah. all that sort of thing. Oh, I haven't got my pocket watch. Yeah. <laughs> you will go to sleep like that. So, yeah. but um, just like, so, because there is obviously like logical scientific basis and totally. everything for it. Does one of you just want to like explain like briefly how I'm it works? Le- I'll leave Electra do it <laughs> and I'll fill in, I'll fill in the sciencey bit. So I'll you go one, in. I'll do the next bit. <laughs> Oh, I was thinking, why Just isn't the, the pharmacist doing this, for goodness well, sake, I'll when you said it science? She's gonna, you you're going to do this introduction and Claire's going to come in with a scientific wham at the end. Okay, so, so for me, <laughs> how I always say to people is, you know, there's the control centre is your brain. Yeah. So why wouldn't you? It's like I'm having some T-shirts made for going to the gym. It's like, why wouldn't you train your brain as much as you train Love your body? That. And Can it's I that. wear one? Yeah, if you want. Please. Yeah. That'd be good. So, um, yeah, because that's what it is. It's like we've got this, you know, this is the central control system. And we have, A, we barely have any idea of how it works. Mm -hmm. Most of the systems that we work within are designed to uh, break you. Um, And so actually what we do is we teach people how to function in a world that is designed to break them. Okay. Is actually what we do. I know. I know, and, but I think we're realising, you know, yeah. you're seeing mindfulness in schools mm, and yep. yoga and, you know, and they're starting to talk about more about, you know, growth mindset and things like that. So it's about harnessing the power of the brain mm-hmm. because actually why wouldn't you? Yeah. You know, people, they've had this kind of divide. So, you know, health stops here, yeah. mental health starts here. Mm-hmm. And actually it's, it's health, you know, yeah. you don't have health without mental health. No. You know, and the fact is the, the brain affects the body and the body affects the brain. Mm-hmm. So you should integrate them. And the more that you integrate them, the easier it is. Mm-hmm. And we have a teeny tiny bit of us which is conscious and most of it we have zero control over. Um, mm-hmm. So it's because we don't know how to use it. So mm-hmm. it's actually teaching people to have a little bit more control. That's yeah. very metaphorical. Okay. Um, but, you know, you did say you were going to do the science. So, <laughs> you know. Yeah. 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 I think that's what separates what we do from a lot of other hypnotherapists. Mm-hmm. That we do talk a lot about the brain. The kind okay. of clients that we have... You know, if you come and see us, you're going to learn about lots of chemistry stuff. Uh-huh. And that, I think people like either go, oh, my God, that's amazing. Or, whoa, these are long words I never knew. We talk about serotonin, your happiness hormone. We talk yeah. about dopamine, which is what we get when we get overcome a challenge. You can get that real oh, buzz. Dopamine hit is so bad. Dopamine hit, it's big stuff. That's I love it. Boys. Bad. And we talk true. about oxytocin, that really warm bonding feeling that you get when you're with your favourite people mm-hmm. and they make you feel like you can do anything. Those three hormones we talk about all the time because that's hugely important. Recognising where you can can get those mm-hmm. how you can build that into your day mm-hmm. as opposed to relying on pharmaceuticals which will hold those chemicals in your brain for longer yes but they don't give them to you so no. it doesn't matter how much serotonin releasing in, you know in, inhibiting factors you take that stops it being recycled okay. if you don't have any serotonin there to start with it's never going to work you okay. can take shed loads of the stuff but if you've got no serotonin to recycle mm-hmm. it won't work Okay. So that's where pharmacy and hypnotherapy cross over because there is a place for making stuff work better. Oh, that's cool. That's Learning really what good. you can do. Brain hacks. Brain hacks. Because I think, yeah, I think I would imagine that people that come to you like really appreciate because, again, if they're coming with a pre. Um, What's the word I'm looking for? Like a perception of, of what it being therapy, fluffy. Exactly. Yeah, it's not fluffy. It's neuroscience. That? Okay, so it's actually based in like that sort of like. There's so much yeah. research. There's more and more research coming out all the time. Now that we can do imaging studies, so you can see which parts of the brain do what, when, how, why, and what works together. The more of that you can see, mm. that underpins what we do. But it's kind of what we already know. You're learning how to control the bits that we don't have any control. We just leave on autopilot, mm-hmm. and then wonder why it doesn't work. Yes, because like you say, you're you're only conscious in a very small part, and everything else is just like. Yeah. Would you say like a? Um... So I did it as like a today. I saw someone for the first time, and I was talking about you know the metaphor of driving it being the driver of the car. Mm, okay. It's like we have the steering wheel. Yeah. We have the accelerator, mm-hmm. the brake the gears Mm -hmm. that's the only bits we're in control of Mm -hmm. so but we are in control of the car but we're not doing any of it we're just steering it and making it go faster and slower yeah so that's Mm -hmm. all that we're in control of but Mm -hmm. we're actually the person who's like it'll send it straight on the road or into the ditch you know we can accelerate it we can get where we want to go or we can bunny hop up the road yeah you know so it's that as a thing we yeah we don't have much control but the control we have is pivotal Okay. And that's, that's a, the bit, you know, so I always talk about, you know, I'm going to teach you how to be a good boss, mm-hmm. you know, and a good boss is someone who knows how to kind of 
make everyone do what they want them to do and get the best out of them all. And so that's what we do. Okay. That's, that's amazing. a really good analogy, isn't it? I love that. Driving the car. That is a brilliant analogy. On a more personal note, have either of you sort of like briefly struggled with your mental health or and have you what's actually helped you? Just like I'm just thinking like for people that are watching or listening, if they're at a low point, what would be like a tip for like for them to start to give their like mental health a little hug and to make it feel better? What would be the one? We're joking because we said we'd both say the same thing. We are. <laughs> <laughs> so I would say mine's would say if it's social interaction, there okay. are times when that feels like the worst idea in the world. But once okay. you go and do it, and you feel those interactions we're all quite tribal we're designed to function as tribal people we're really quite a little bit prehistoric in how we function and our brains Mm -hmm. haven't developed and evolved as rapidly as the world around us so we do still need to be together Mm -hmm. so there are times when that feels like a really horrible scary thing because it's too many people and i have to talk but when you go and you feel you still spend time with people who matter to you who you feel comfortable with where you feel that big rush of oxytocin that nice warm bonding thing you feel better you yeah. feel happier. Picking your safe people. Picking your safe people. That is it? Yeah, you know, quality it's not interactions. Ju- yes. It's not just people. It is, the, you, you nailed it, it's the safe people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think we would all, you know, say, have we ever struggled with our mental health? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Does. Anyone that says no probably isn't like, entirely like accurate. Have you ever, have you never had a cold then? Yes. Yeah, exactly. Like, uh, yeah, of course you have. You exactly. know, ever yeah. broken your leg? You know, some people have, some people haven't. You know, we've all... You know, yeah. it's, and that's it. It's that, and like, it's just health. Yeah. You know, it's just health. Mm. I think it's, I'm not sure it's the right, oh, this is a whole other podcast here. So <laughs> I'm just going to, oh, I'm going to clamp that one down there. But is it a good way of talking about it to say mental health, physical so health? Because yeah. we don't it's talk in... about, we, you know, we have that thing, we don't talk about physical health. We just no. talk about health. Are you yeah. healthy? Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's so true. And it's like, if we just, are you healthy, mm. then I think it changes it a little bit. And it, I think it is important, like you say, to talk about health as a whole and to not make that separation because you are a whole person. You're not a brain and a body. Well, no, because then we deal with things like OCD and yeah. IBS and mm-hmm. things like that. Which you have know, a very physical component. And weight you can management, impact on those. all like of that say, stuff. So it is that whole... A whole other podcast, like the placebo effect and everything. Oh, that's and my favourite. In how Don't get me started on that one. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It, it literally blows my mind. But, no, yeah. So much stuff there. It's crazy, isn't it? Thank you so much. I do really appreciate you um, you sharing that with me today. That's been really helpful. Right. So if people want to connect with you, where can they find you? And like any projects that you want to talk about? Ellie, I know you've got a, men- a podcast that you, you've you been doing. So you can... uh, not doing. <laughs> it's in process. Um, it is coming up. Allegedly, it's starting a little bit... Um, well, so I'm supposed to be starting in April, so, okay. you know, so don't know when this is going out, but whenever. So, um, yeah, so that'll be a podcast around positive mental health. Mm. Excellent. Um, and obviously the school is my baby, yeah. um, you know, so for me, those two things. And I think then the podcast and that is just a way of, another way of talking about what we do mm-hmm. in actually in a positive way, because there's a lot of negative stuff out there and we want to kind of try and yeah. just Readdress the balance. Readdress, yeah, re- yeah, address, adjust. Okay. Balance. Anyway, yeah, balance. Right. Readjust yes. the balance, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Readjust your right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and where can people find you? So, really easy to find um, me on Facebook under Inspired to Change Maidstone or um, I'm trying to remember what my Instagram accounts are called. So, <laughs> I can't. So you have a podcast just, and But basically, what I always <laughs> say to people is, it's just like, I'm really easy to find. It sounds so arrogant. Just Google Ali Hollands. Love it. It's so much easier. She has a, a Google profile, people. She'll come up as a no, topic. It's just, it's just, <laughs> you do? Number one. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, I'm just quite old. No. I think that's all it is. <laughs> but, yeah. That's fine. We can put out your contact details yeah. in, in the comments. That's fine. And Claire, I understand you're you're doing some really interesting work with Gillingham Football yes, Club. Yes, looking at Yay. mental health from small people. You know, oh. they're in a football environment. It's a high pressured, high performance environment. Massively. So let them get a handle on their mental health, mm-hmm. and not looking at mental health as a negative thing. We mm-hmm. don't have positive health, men- negative mental health. We just have mental health. That's what you were saying. Mm. It's a thing. It's an mm. all in one thing. So teaching them how to get a handle on that to deal with the pressure, to deal with the stress and strains, and the physical demands. Mm-hmm is important so yes i'm doing some work with them which will be exciting perfect and where can people find and you? you can find me i'm inspired to change but i'm maystone east or yeah. kings hill oh perfect so yeah inspired to change you'll find both of us thank you so much i do really appreciate thank you. it thank and, you um, i would like to have you back at some point we can talk We'd about love to come placebo back. or maybe even oh, yeah. death to the fempreneur 
Yeah. Or sleep. Or sleep. 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 Lecture oh, people about sleep for, for half an hour. hours. Yeah. 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 Forever. And we can talk about our little guy, our sleep man, Matthew Walker. Matthew Walker is sleep the dude. Guru. The dude. Anyway, that's the topic for another day. Thank you Indeed. so much. Thank you Thanks. so much. Thank you.